Hello, hey, it's Splurge, back with another Black Ops 6 video. Today we will be going over all the weapons and all the attachments, as well as when can you preload, plus launch details. A look into the new UI, also the new weapon statistics page, and when exactly will you unlock each weapon, so keep an eye out for your favorite gun if on the list. With all that being said, let's get into the video. The first weapons that will be immediately unlocked is the XM4 Assault Rifle, the C9 SMG, the Marine SP Shotgun, the PU21 LMG, the SWAT 5.56 Marksman Rifle, LW3A1 Frostline Sniper, 9mm PM Pistol, the Sigma 2B Launcher, and the knife for the melee. Now we will be going over the ARs that you would have to earn by leveling up in order. First up with the ARs is AK-74 unlocked at level 10. The AMES or the AEMES-85 at level 19. The GPR-91 unlocked at level 28. Model L unlocked at level 40. The Goblin MK-2 unlocked at level 46. The AS- Veil vale, unlocked at level 55. Now the SMGs that you will earn by leveling up are KSV level 7, Tonto 22 level 16, PP919 level 37, Jackal PDW level 43, Compact 92 level 49. So the only shotgun you will need to earn through leveling up is the ASG89 level 31. There will be two LMGs to earn. First off is XMG unlocked at level 13, GPMG 7 unlocked at level 52. So the marksman rifles to level up to get is the Sarkov 7.62 unlocked at level 22, AEK 973 unlocked at level 34, and the DM 10 unlocked at level 43. So with the crosshair update of the snipers after the beta, I'm sure you would like to know which two snipers you will need to unlock. First off is the SVD unlocked at level 25 and the LR 7.62 unlocked at level 49. Now for the pistols you will have to earn by leveling up are Grekova at level 13, the GS 45 unlocked at level 28, Strider .22 unlocked at level 40. Just like the shotguns, the launchers only have one to earn after leveling up, which is the HE-1 unlocked after level 19, as well as the melee section, which is the baseball bat, and that'll be earned after leveling up to level 52. If you are enjoying the Black Ops 6 content, we are keeping up on the latest information up until launch, so be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to never miss one of our up and coming videos. Now taking a look at the loadout UI, Shows the details of the first three loadout slots, the primary, secondary, and melee. You can add loadouts, creating a maximum of 10. Also, you can set one loadout as your favorite. This loadout acts as your default spawn class in games. And you can rename, duplicate, or delete any loadout. So not much has changed off of the loadouts from the past. They still have the lethal, they still have the tactical, still have the field upgrade and the perks. Only thing different this year is the specialty, and we'll cover that in a later video. Finally, the wild card. You can pick between the gunfighter, between many attachments on your weapon and or the wild card for perks to have up to two more extra perks total of five same as last year when you click to edit your weapons you will see your attachments and basic stats from before at the bottom right of your screen and i do say basic because the in-depth attachment details that you're gonna see right now now taking a look at this screen if i was a gamer from 2009 early days cod to looking at this screen and teleported in the future to look at this i would sit here and think that it's rpg game a wizard worrying about his stats and a knight worrying about his armor when i see this it looks to me like a dark souls menu but to have it is to some more better since you have that more in depth to it but to me when they're adding in all of these more elements into the game all the new stats to each attachment it adds this huge extra layer to if you wouldn't know specifically what you're going to be dying by or not with what gun that they're using it just complicates and makes things messy in my opinion rather than back in the day when you just had a few attachments and a basic adjustment menu bar so let 
me know in the comments down below. Are you a player who is okay with having this extra layer of all of these attachments adding on to their weapons? Or are you a more like me, an older gamer who would more appreciate a simplicity style of having just a few attachments? Because at this point, you can't even call any of these attachments base attachments. It's just all of the above. So before we talk about the attachments themselves, take a look. It's going to show you a sheet of which attachments can and cannot go on some certain weapons. Screenshot it if you have to. There you go. Optics are what you put on your weapon to help you from aiming from far range to close range depending on what reticle you decide to put on. Muzzles can help either suppress your gunfire or you can either equip a flash hider. Barrels like optics depending on a short barrel or a long barrel can help with your stability at long range or help with mobility in close quarters. Under barrels can help with your aim down sight speeds as well as your horizontal and vertical recoil. Magazines, although giving you a large amount to be able to fire at your enemies, the larger they are, the slower you do get. Rear grips can also help with aim down sight speeds as well as weapon sway and aiming while walking stability. Stocks, rather than having Having no stock or heavy stock, and heavy stock can help you with long range gunfire. Some will offer combos of helping with recoil as well as stability when walking and pros and cons to mobility and aim down sight speeds. Lasers help with hip fire but also can be seen by enemies. All attachments when equipped have pros and cons, so be sure to take in mind your playstyle when equipping which attachment combos on your weapon. And then we have fire mods, depending on what weapon category you choose can help with how fast your weapon shoots and also weapon bullet penetration. Now taking a look at the new updated UI coming to the future update. Seems like they condensed all of the games so that you don't have to drag from the top to the bottom. Should be making it easier to choose through your favorite games game modes and overall just a lot more quick and easy to use. Still looks like a Netflix menu though. On the other hand, the game's main menu looks pleasantly simple. The multiplayer, zombies, and campaign, simply put, gladly nothing overwhelmingly complicated. And finally, may we feel the wrath of crossplay taking console side as a favorite. Preload and launch all platforms on October 21st, 9 a.m. Pacific time will be able to download their pre-orders. Xbox, PC, Microsoft Store, PlayStation will be able to play their games on October 24th, 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. Pacific time. Battle.net and Steam, on the other hand, on October 24th, 9 p.m. Pacific time, later than consoles will be able to play their game. And if you're in a different region, then it could be October 25th already for them. So it's not very clear that this year we're all going to be able to get on at the same time. But assuming that they're going to be spreading it apart, and it could be to save the servers from crashing those first hours when it floods. I don't think that it's very fair. I believe we all should get on the game at the same time. So with everything that we covered in today's video, I would love to hear your comments down below. A like and subscribe for the team channel always helps. My name is Splurge. See you in the next one.